Hiya Tape Shaggers, I've already done a couple of videos about the electronics inside the Tascam 244 where I'm concentrating on the route that the audio signal takes from the head through to the mixer in playback mode. Um, but in those videos I didn't really go into the schematics and I didn't demonstrate how I use the audio probe to find where things are going wrong in a circuit in a concise way. So that's what this video is about. There's actually a bit of a red herring in here because it turns out at the end uh, what I thought was the problem, which is some bad caps and bad solder uh, within the electronics, wasn't the cause of the low signal that I was getting on three tracks. It turns out to be a problem with the head and it's a problem that goes against some of the things that I've said in other videos because uh, this particular repair presented me with a problem that I hadn't seen before. So stick around to the end to find out what that issue was. So I'll roll the introduction and then we'll get into the footage from the workshop. <laughs> Um, here's a little story from the workbench about this 244. Um, I've got my test tape in there and uh, channel 4 is producing a loud signal and the other three are barely producing any signal at all. So that's the signal coming out of channel 1, 2, 3, 4, much louder. Okay, so by the time it gets the tape out, that problem's already there. Tape outs are coming from this board here, leaving the DBX board and entering this board. It's this socket here. And you can tell from the colours what's there, okay? So the, we've got the yellow one here um, that's splitting off the black and the white. The white's got the signal, the black is a connection to circuit ground. So if I put the negative side of my audio probe on the negative one and then the positive side, hear a loud signal, but if I do it for the other pairs, there but it's much quieter there but it's much quieter it's there but it's much quieter so that establishes that the attenuation of the signal has already happened after it's left the dbx board this side of the dbx board is in code so that's what the playback's going through and the easiest way to test this is um any of these uh casings on these uh, variable inductors are going to be circuit ground so I'll just pick this one right and then I can use the top of these quiet quiet these uh, electrolytic capacitors um, to test whether the signals there it's there I think this is the can you see that yeah but that's four so it's much louder even as it reaches this board so the attenuation and volume must be happening here on the playback i'm going to use one of these i'll just try and get this on screen so you can see oh, that's going to be ground so quiet 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 a lot louder that's four one two three four these are the trim pots so even by the time we get to that first trim pot it's a lot louder. So what might that be? Well, if we look at the schematic, it's going to be op amp or capacitors before this first gain stage. I was talking about that 244 as though everyone watching is as familiar with that circuit as I am, having had to work on the electrics dozens and dozens of times. So even if you've watched the videos I've made before about the schematic, let's refresh ourselves. So here we are in the top left corner of the file, which I assume I've got up on my blog. You've got the record playhead and uh, that comes in here and the bit highlighted in pink here is the uh, relay, uh, which if you're set up for playback, depending on which switches you've set as the user on the front, is going to then direct the signal off this board. These are the two boards. I've grayed them out to make it easier, but you can see that's the record amplifier and the playback amplifier. So those are the two vertically orientated ones that are in the center of the unit. So this is where you plug in the head coming from the transport and it's uh, going to this relay, but if it's in playback mode, it's immediately coming off that board and it's coming onto the playback board. So what's this is channel one highlighted, but you can see that there are these three duplicates of it. But basically we've got a few capacitors going to ground 
or are part of the uh, feedback loop that sets gain on this operational amplifier U301 but there's these two coupling capacitors either side of the operational amplifier I'm not entirely sure by looking at this I would have to remind myself whether this variable resistor here is the EQ and this one is the playback or vice versa but anyway those are the trim pots so one of those is uh, the bit that you could see me accessing at the end of the last clip I can't get at these two audio bypass capacitors uh, without taking the boards out which is why I didn't use those to test with the audio probe so once it cuts it's past the stage then it's coming off that board and you can see that it's going onto the dbx board so i'll switch to a different schematic because it's not shown in detail on this page uh, wrong one here yeah okay so that's coming from the playback amplifier in through this input uh, so there's a coupling capacitor there an operational amplifier this u105 is the uh sort of proprietary well and in combination with u106 here that's that's your dbx decoder and um, there's some sort of amplitude modulation gubbins going on there in order to just to make it less hissy basically once it's been through that process it comes through this operational amplifier and then it goes through this coupling capacitor are these contributing any gain probably not i think they're probably working as buffers either side of this but anyway i was just trying to figure out whether that attenuation of signal was happening somewhere in here and it wasn't so once it's come out of there it's going to the take queue this one here so it's coming in on the socket here i was putting the audio probe on the base of these so i was putting the negative part of the probe on the negative side and i was putting the positive probe on here that's how i was testing it in that clip and then it goes through an op amp stage it actually splits off here so one of these op amps goes here to take you that splits off here this one's going through some sort of resistor so the output impedance to these tape outs is correct but then another copy of it goes off to the input amplifier pcb which is really your mixer strips right at this stage the attenuation was already present so uh, working backwards what i was doing in the clip uh checked these tape outs and four was loud but the other three were quiet then i checked these points here four was loud three were quiet so i knew that these weren't part of the problem that i was actually assessing then i went back to the dbx board and because these departing audio coupling capacitors i was getting that attenuation on channels one through three but not four that i knew that that problem in levels was already present when it got to this board so that takes us back to here then I've tested either this one or this one, I can't remember. So I figure that the problem must be in the guts here. Uh, maybe bad solar, three bad op amps, or bad power to three op amps. So that would be less likely. Often when you have these attenuation problems, it's either bad solder or especially these coupling capacitors. Anyway, I am figuring that the problem is here. So I'm going to go ahead and recap and reflow the solder on this. So the record playback is out of the board and I've touched up all the solder on the bottom of the op amps. You can see that um, I've left the original capacitors where my finger's tapping, but I've uh, recapped channels one through three um, with these Nichicon gold coloured UFW capacitors. So having recapped those three channels of the playback amplifier, I reassembled the unit and I was still getting the same problem, still getting three quiet channels. And the only thing that was earlier than the circuit that I was showing you there uh, was the magnetic head. So on a whim, I changed it and it fixed my problem. Um, I've said in the past that it has been my experience up till now, and it had been, uh, that these things either Work. I say these things, so let me show you this a little bit closer to the camera. This is the play record head. It's common to the 244, 246, 234, and so on. Uh, it has been my experience that either they work or they don't. Right? You've got to imagine that there's a little electromagnet, like a little coil of wire wrapped around a ferrite magnet in there. Well, there's four of them, uh, one for each track. 
and then you've got this kind of precision engineered casing which prevents the magnetic field from the electromagnet coming out except through four very narrow apertures here. And I think what had happened in this case was that these were blocked with the tar that the uh, rubber degenerates into, uh, the rubber for the cassette transport over time. This job was done for a customer who had done a good job of replacing the rubber in the unit themselves based on my videos, but they hadn't done a very good job of cleaning up the tarry remains of old idler tires and pinch rollers and so on. So when I got in there to clean it and check over his work, I ended up with a lot of this tar on my fingers and so on. And I certainly noticed there was quite a lot of tar actually on the pinch roller and then on the new pinch roller, which is bad news. And um, when I went to clean this, normally I go over this with isopropyl and you know maybe get a little bit of grey on there, like a little bit of buildup of tape uh, dust, if you will. Um, on this one, I was getting a black mark for a lot longer. And it did strike me as weird at the time, but I didn't think that much of it. But I think what happened is that the black goo had got on the tape path and then the cassette had actually ground it into three out of the four holes. And that is preventing the uh, little electric field getting to the tape or the electric field on the tape getting into this to create a signal to be sent back to the amplifier. I think that was what the problem was. Um, so uh, yeah, be aware that even if you do the thing where you test for continuity of the coils to see whether this is intact, because usually what happens is there's pressure put in this and so the magnets or the coils themselves inside here get broken. Um, but even if they're intact, if those apertures are blocked then the head won't work properly. It would be interesting to have kept a record of how many Porter Studios I've actually fixed. I think it must be over 300 now and at least 100 of those were the 244 and it was the first time I've ever come across this so I don't think it's the kind of thing that you're going to come across often but be aware that's a problem it turns out. Anyway uh, thanks for watching to the end. Um, support me on Patreon or don't. I mean, you know, I'll still be making these videos for free anyway. Uh, thanks. See you again soon. Bye.